me and my sister-in-law were having a discussion about books and it was starting to lean to a debate with Twilight. And what I knew from Twilight was, well, YouTube critics reviewing the movies and also some people giving their ideas of what the book, of what they thought of the books and the characters. This is all I had. And I thought I had a good way, I had to show my sister-in-law what I thought about Twilight. However, she destroyed everything I had with one question. Have I read Twilight? And I told her the truth. Nope. So, you don't know the source material. You know absolutely nothing. Your opinion doesn't matter. She's right. But now I have listened through them. And I'm ready to prove, show her my side of the debate now. Hello and welcome to The Pond, the strange corner of YouTube, where we do reviews, deep dives, analyze Disney villains, and also highlight cows. So in a few weeks or, mo or a month or so, these two are going to give birth. There you go, little guy. And I've been working at it for over six months by now. <laughs> that cold open is really what this video is about. Thanks, Captain Obvious. Now that I've actually listened through the four books of Twilight, not all the offshoots, -shoot no, just the four main books, the books that changed literature and created a new genre, paranormal romance. You could see it in bookstores and some libraries. What do I think about it? Well, my opinion has shifted. What? I admit, there are some things of Twilight that I like. Wait, what? There's also some things in Twilight that I hate. Ah, uh, it's still there though. So this video is, is me highlighting the reasons why I like Twilight and the reasons why I hate Twilight. And where does this lead Twilight to? So let's begin with the good things of Twilight. I still can't believe I'm saying that. The books aren't as bad as the movies. What? The books aren't the movies. They're not that horribly put together. The characters are actually tolerable and I'll show you on a percent scale of what I thought of each and every character. What I mean is the main three, Bella, Edward, and Jacob. Cause I would say Bella in the books, one through three, 60% of her, uh, of her character is actually enjoyable. Yes, there's 40% of her that's absolutely annoying, but she is still enjoyable. Edward is the exact opposite. 60% of Edward is just annoying, but there is 40% of him that is actually not that bad to listen to. Really? There's some parts about him that is actually enjoyable. But once I but once we get to meet Jacob in books one through and two, he is 90% likable and 10% annoying. So are you saying you're Team Jacob? We'll get into that later. But I said this was Jacob for books one and two. When book three happens, Jacob goes from a 90 to percent likable to 70% like, well, he took a drop, but this is all books one through three. Book four, there is a huge character change. First off, Bella goes from 60% likable to 90% likable. 10% annoying, she's still annoying, but not as much in the fourth book. And Edward goes from this to this. 70% likable. I enjoyed him more. And yeah, he's still annoying as crap, but not as much. But then we have Jacob. Wolf boy. He just gets down, 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 stupid. He's this, man. 
He's 80% unlikable and stupid to the levels of he should be arrested. I hate you. Why did you do that, Stephanie Meyer? But with going into characters, there is one character of Twilight that with each book, he gets better, better, and better, and better. But in book one, he's already the best character. <laughs> and that is Bella's dad, Charlie. His story, I think, is the best story out of the whole Twilight series. I mean, this is the way how he is. This is a divorcee who is estranged from his daughter for this long. But now his daughter decides to come live with him and spend the last final days of high school with you. And Charlie feels a sense of responsibility, but also how can he build this estrangement? Are we going to live like this or are we going to become father and daughter? And you see this relationship go more and more towards Charlie in the first book, mind you. And when Bella says something, she knows this will tear her dad apart. And she regrets to say it. And she doesn't want to say it. She doesn't want to. Because she knows this is too much. But the relationship between father and daughter has become so much that she actually enjoys her father. And throughout the rest of the books, you see that progress more and more. I bet if you did a movie just focusing on his side of the story throughout the whole entire series, you'll find out that is actually a good arc, really done, and people will call it, this is a masterpiece. A sheer masterpiece. You know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. Look, a lot of people are kind of curious. So at the beginning of this video, you were kind of showing you were Team Jacob. But now at the but then when you're talking about characters in book four, it seemed you were Team Edward. So is this what you are? Team Edward, Team Jacob? Actually, I'm Team Bella. What? The way how Stephanie Meyer written Bella Swan, I kind of saw that Bella, the idea of her and what her idea represents is, this is what would be the perfect woman for a heterosexual man. Think about it. Edward, yeah, is a perfectly cut figure. Yes. I knew it! The idea of Edward is vampire, unnatural, supernatural, and a character's flaws who's trying his best to control his flaws and to have that aspect of his flaws hidden from average people. He doesn't want to know people to know of these flaws. If people knew about these flaws, they would run away. Bella finds out his flaws. Vampire. Throughout this saga, she stands by him. Yes, she gets tempted. And through temptation, she learns she still loves her man. So she'll stand by a guy who is flawed, who is terrified of his flaws, and feels like he doesn't belong. And then you add on the fourth book. I will stand by you through your flaws. I will stand by you through your lows. And I will stand by you so much so that when you have self-doubt and think the best thing to do is to harm our child, guess what? I am going to stand for our child. Not your child, not my child, our child. That supernatural baby that's not meant to be, I will still stand by it. This is your blood as it is mine. It's 50-50. And I am exercising my 50% of this job of being an actual parent. Even if it means I have to stand up for you to be the father. <laughs> that ending that we were promised could have been amazing. It was a part of Twilight I was looking forward to. A war between Italian pure blood vampires versus other vampires and werewolves. But we didn't get that. Before I can talk about that con, I want to talk about the pro, the fact that something in Twilight I was looking forward to. 
me, a guy who went through these books going, I can't wait to tear out a new one, to suddenly, I'm looking forward to this. Book four, you're building this up. Book four, I want this. Book four, why did you not go there? You should have, please. <laughs> the cons be starts now. She didn't deliver on the ending. That could have been awesome. That could have been glorious. Stephanie Meyer, Twilight is a girly book series now. But if you just gave it that ending, you would have a large population of men defending your books. You could have a large population of men who enjoyed your characters and also enjoyed that ending like No Tomorrow. I'm sure there'll be a ton of teenage boys going, isn't this awesome? Tore his face right off. And that's not me just saying words. The fact that she showed off she can be dark and gruesome in book four. And that, that kind of built up the point even more of how much of that war could have been glorious and manly like no tomorrow. One of the big issues I have with Twilight is the love story. The seed, the spark that created this love story that, oh, that blew up the pop culture. That many women just said, I want my man to be Edward. <laughs> began out of a dumb conflict. Bella finds out Edward didn't want to be in the same science class as her. She was offended and she wanted to know why and what did she do wrong. Those are the three main reasons why. Really? Conflict. Look, for a love story, there's three things you can, how to build a romance. Conflict is the dumbest and weakest point. And I'm sure I'm not the only person who believes that. But there's also love at first sight. It's very fantasy and a lot of people right now find it a little dull. But then there's this third part of romance, to build a love story, that doesn't get highlighted as much. It begins with a conversation. That's all. Yes, you could still have attraction there, but conversation does build a better foundation for a romance story. Yes, this is fantasy. There's vampires, there's werewolves, there's people that could live for a thousands of years. I get that, but I'm a romantic, okay? And the romantic inside me was disappointed that this is how this love story is foundation is on. And this is just Bella's side of the love story that she felt offended and wanted to know more. Edward's side of the romance story is weird. Not in the sense of, this is weird, but more in the sense of, How creative. Or weird. He couldn't stand her because of the smell of her blood, because she, she smelled too delicious and he wanted it, but that bothered him. That's one of the main reasons why he didn't want to be part of the class. Woof. But another aspect of why he ended up wanting to know Bella was one thing, he could never read her mind. The reason why Edward fell in love with Bella is that he's a vampire. Because of Edward being a vampire, his nose and the ability to read minds is the reason why he ends up falling in love with Bella. If one aspect of him being a vampire is removed, there would be no relationship. Period. Bing, bang, boom. The Stephanie Meyer written these books, so that is the cause. It's a good paranormal aspect but it's not a good romantic aspect what i mean by this is edward couldn't read bella's mind that means he prefers it that you know don't have privacy to your thoughts he because bella has privacy and her mind is free from anyone prodding and she's maintaining that independence, he can't have that. That puts him down on the path of falling in love with her. You are independent from me. Sounds romantic, but yet he doesn't like it. 
He doesn't like that he can't read Bella's mind. In the very beginning, in the first book, and parts of the second book, mind you, he doesn't like that he can't read Bella's mind. That sounds like a problem, doesn't it? In book two, one of his family members tried to kill Bella because she got cut. And Edward realizes his world is unsafe for her. So he thinks the best way to save her is to do a clean breakup. A clean breakup? Breaking up is like knocking over a Coke machine. You can't do it in one push. You gotta rock it back and forth a few times and then it goes over. <laughs> That's beautiful. How did this man, this fictional character who was created from words, Woo women, I'll never understand. A clean breakup? Dude, you have a better chance of discovering plutonium by accident than having a clean breakup. It's impossible. As human beings, we are not emotionally capable of achieving such a thing. And also, Bella's response to it. She becomes a zombie and she feels like she can no longer live. Girl, you have attachment issues. And this was really one of the roughest parts of the book. If there was no Jacob in the book two, I don't know how I would have survived the book series. <sighs> and speaking of cons, do I need to go more into Jacob and why in book four he was, it was the most dumbest thing ever? You're going to stay away from her. You know I can't do that. I can, oh, that's all I need? Good, I don't want to go more into that. Ugh, disgusting. Agreed. There's good and there's bad. There's really well done and poorly done. But that ending changed the raking. If she gave me that ending, I would have given Twilight a six out of seven. But we didn't. But Marge, that little guy hasn't done anything yet. Look at him. He's going to do something. And you know it's going to be good. Twilight is a four out of seven. It's meh. Maybe Twilight is just the highlight of men can never understand women. If you agree or disagree, go down in the comments. And... Did you expect me to have this idea of Bella from Twilight? Do you agree with that as well? I really would like to know. Or am I just grasping at straws? Until that time, this is the Bullfrog signing out. And realizing that was the best thing, way how you could transition this video to end. My bad. But... Twilight is okay. I just never thought I would say that. I wonder what else will change my opinion on things.